Let's talk about four steps to handling objections. Four steps. There does, and there are four easy steps to handling an objection. An objection shows up. Let me give you something for your notes, okay? Well, actually, let's do this together. Well, that clock up there is giving me all kinds of different numbers. So, give me an objection. Go ahead. It's a cult. cult? We're going to start with a cult? (laughs) All right. (laughs) No time. No money. It's a pyramid. Scam. Spouse will kill me. Huh? Failed before. Okay, I'll get there. I'll get there. Hold on, hold on. Uh, can't sell. Too expensive. Huh? I'm not like you. I'm not that kind of, I'm not a salesperson kind of thing. Does that fall into that category kind of? Don't know anybody. Don't like people. No uh, No education. Don't want to pressure friends. Money is evil. Huh? What? College is my priority. Doesn't work. Ponzi scheme. Doesn't work. Only the top. Make, huh? What? Uh, science of, doesn't back what up? The of network marketing part? Or the product? Okay, uh, yeah, product uh, problems. Saturated. Need security. Huh? Show me how much you making. Bad reviews. Huh? Lost your job. Oh, I love my job. Well, we'll do both. Don't need the money. Huh? Not on social media. Comp- huh? I got saturated. Huh? Bad economy. Hold on, let me do another one. A bad economy. Good economy. No economy. Huh? Um, competition is less? Oh, so that's product price again. Uh, support, okay, no support. Yeah, the lose benefits. Too good to be true. God, I got it. Well, here's, here's one. Got to pray about it. Huh? Uh, research. Well, you know, uh, why do I have to pay?
Let me think about it. Do I have to go to an event? I think we got it. This is a pretty depressing list, yeah? <laughs> There's really only two. You ready for this? There's really only two. They have a limiting belief about network marketing or they have a limiting belief about themselves. That's really it. Let's go through our list just for fun. Number one. Oh, did I cover that already? Do I have this here? No, 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 no. Yeah, throw that up. Throw that slide up, please. Limiting belief about themselves, limiting belief about network marketing. So, cult, what's that? A self or network marketing? Network marketing. No time. No money. Pyramid. Scam. Spouse. Failed before. Could be both. Can't sell. Too expensive. No contacts. I need to pray about it. I need to think about it. Don't like people. No educational background. I have to pressure friends. They think they have to pressure friends because of network marketing. That's what they think. Okay? Money is evil. Uh, college is my priority. This doesn't work. It's a Ponzi. Doesn't work again. <laughs> Only the top make money. Um, it's saturated. Too good to be true. I need security. How much are you making? Network marketing. Bad reviews. I lost my job. I love my job. I know social media. Bad economy. Bad economy. No economy. No support. A little of both, but I, I put it on the network marketing side. I don't want to lose my benefits. So I need to do more research. A little bit of network marketing probably, maybe, maybe both. But why do I have to pay? They're just general ignorance. <laughs> That's its own, like, I'll, I'm going to give you an opportunity to take that one back. Don't say that out loud ever again. <laughs> so, the rest of them are just, you see what I'm saying? It's just, so once you understand, they've got a limiting belief, they've got a block when it comes to this as a profession, or they've got a limiting belief or blocks about themselves. That's it. That's it. So let's talk about this. Limiting beliefs about self. Limiting beliefs about network marketing. Here's four steps to handle objections. Four steps. Four simple steps that will help you deal with any issue, anything that comes up. You're going to be bulletproof. Four steps. Step number one is to listen. What do consultants do? Listen and ask questions. They bring up the objection. You might listen and you might also... In that listen box, ask some questions for clarity. So let me, let me, when you say you don't have the money, are you saying you absolutely don't have it or you haven't, well, I haven't shown you enough to justify it? Or are you saying that you'd have to get creative? Are you saying, what are you saying? Help me understand it, just for clarity. Get clear on it, okay? So listen to the point that you understand what it is that is the objection as best you can. And you might have to ask two, three, four questions. If you notice when I interact with people, how many questions I ask? Tons. Tons. And, and I'm genuinely curious. I genuinely want to know. person says, I don't have the time. I'm like, wow, really? When you say you don't have time, what do you mean? First of all, how, how much time are you thinking this might take? And how much... 
I, I just don't understand when you say you don't have time. So help me understand. And not to fight them, just to, under, just to get understanding and have them feel heard. Second is to relate. Relate. Here's what I mean by relate. I know how you feel. I understand. That, that's a valid thing. Whatever it is, I don't have the money. I get it. Who has a lot of extra money laying around nowadays? At the end of the month, no matter, what I've kind of learned is no matter how much you make at the end of the month, it's about the same. You know, we find a way to spend it, and we figure out, and we keep ourselves in this tough situation, and credit cards, and all these different kind of things in order to be able to keep ourselves alive. I get it, man. I get it. Extra? Extra would be nice. Extra, I should be saving. Extra, I should be taking care of my kid's college education now before, it, before it, you know, that shows up. I get it, man. I'm with you. Relate. You and me, we're the same. I don't know about this network marketing thing. Ah, me too. That's the way I was too when I looked at this. For sure. Relate to them. Connect with them. Whatever it is. Or at least, if it's not personal, at least empathize with them. Person says, I'm a physician and you wouldn't understand. And you're not a physician. I get it. I'm not a physician. I can only imagine. But it's got to, it, it, it has to be a big challenge for you. I would imagine that it would be. That's got to be hard, you know. So find a way to relate to them. You can relate, you can start to build a bridge. And then tell stories. Then ask, if I would you. Listen, relate, tell stories, ask questions. You can do this for any objection in the world. You can do this for any objection in the world. And it's easy. It's so crazy. It's not hard. What's your name? Hi, Sierra. How are you? Nice to see you. So Sierra is here. And I go to Sierra. How old are you, Sierra? 17 years old. Sierra is sitting here getting some information at 17. Good for you. So Sierra shows up. And let's just say for just a moment that she's 18, so she could become a distributor. It's different in different states. Three months and she'll be one. And let's say Sierra says, um, are you going to, you, uh, are you finish high school? No, I'm a senior. Oh, you're a senior? Okay. And uh, after that, plan on going to college? Yes. All right, cool. So let's say I talk to her and I say, Sierra, I got this, you know, we do this cool thing and I tell my story and I, I do the thing. And you see what it is. And I say, Sierra, what'd you like best? And she says, oh, it really, you know, I like the business. And then I, on a scale of one to 10, where are you? You know, would you like to join? I'm a nine. I don't have any money. This is all great, but I don't have any money. I'm in high school, you know? I'm just getting ready to turn 18. See, I, I would say, Sierra, listen, I get it. I understand. And guess what? For a lot of people, even myself, older than you, money is always kind of a big deal. You know, trying to figure out how you're going to save it, how you're going to deal with it, how you're going to have a nest egg, how do you, in case something happens, how do you have a little extra, how do you make this thing work, right? So dealing with that, even, even at an older age than you, I was stressed out about it. So I totally understand trying to figure out how you're going to make your life work, how you're going to make college work, how you're going to make all that stuff work, and is there space to be able to do this, and is it worth the investment? Because I know you're going to have to invest in those credits in college, right? So I totally understand where you're at, and I respect it. But let me tell you a story, and then you go to story. And now my story is way different than Sierra, Yeah. I mean, I don't know how different it is at the, at the, the time of life, but there's big differences here. You don't have to be the same person in order to be able to prospect. You understand what I'm saying? You can be different colors, different ages, different whatever. If you use this approach, you're still going to be fine. So I go to Sierra and I say, you know, let me tell you a story. When I first was introduced to this thing, I had no money. And matter of fact, I, I not only had no money, I had debt. I'd started a little family and I had debt, and I was really worried. And I didn't know how I was gonna be able to create a 
a future for myself. I just didn't know. And I decided, I, I realized when I looked at this that if I didn't make some changes, then I, I might never have any money. If I just followed the crowd, I was going to have what the crowd had. So I looked around and I looked at what successful people did and the risks they were willing to take and how much they were willing to invest in themselves. And just like investing in college, I used this as an opportunity to invest in myself, to grow me, to become an entrepreneur, because I wanted to go into business for myself. And I sense that you probably do too, right? Yeah, to be in business for yourself, there's no better school than this to be able to build yourself a future. That's what I realized for me is I, if I invested in this for me, I didn't go to college. I wasn't smart enough to do it. But I decided to take that little bit that I would have invested in college. I invested it in growing my business and I found a support system that would help me and guide me and be patient with me and, and help me every st single step of the way. So let, let me ask you a question. If I could show you how to turn a little bit of an investment into an entrepreneurial school and build a business while you are getting your education to be able to create an income so by the time you graduate, you've got a business that's already working and kicking out income for you. If I could show you how to do that and balance that and be resourceful enough to figure it out like you're figuring out college, if I could show you that, would you be willing to take the next step and at least take another look? Of course. So, was that a script? No, but it was a formula. And I could do it for any single person. It's very difficult for somebody to say no to me if they want it. If they want it. What's your name, sir? Michael. So I go to Michael. Michael says, you know what? I, 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 I say, you know, I, we start going through and he says, I, you know, look, I don't have the time. Oh, I really don't have time right now. Oh, you, a lot of kids. A lot of kids? And a business. And a business? What mm -hmm. kind of business? I do concrete landscaping. Concrete landscaping? Yes, sir. Wow. And, and, uh, and where do you do that? Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's uh, tough on your body probably, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty tough. tough. How long have you been doing it? 18 years. Wow. So listen, when you, when you said, I don't have the time, that's funny, is I had the same exact thought when I looked at this. Who has time? We're raising a family, we're taking care of kids, trying to have a minute for ourselves every once in a while, trying to take care of our bodies, trying to do, you know, build a business, do all this stuff. I got enough to get to the weekend and collapse and get enough energy to start the new week. Well, the weekend goes to my wife right here. Huh? The weekend goes to my wife. The weekend goes to your wife. Yeah. So between all of that, <laughs> what you're dealing with is overwhelm, right? Oh, yeah. I was dealing with the same thing. Same exact thing. Really? I know where you're coming from. And let me tell you, when I looked at this, I almost said no, because I didn't have the time. But what, here's what went through my head. What happens if I just keep doing what I'm doing now? Five years from today, where am I? Ten years from today, where am I? More stressed out or less? And more. I realized for me, I was going to be more stressed out. Every year, I All delayed right. making some changes. My body was going to suffer. My family was going to suffer. My income was going to suffer. My future was going to suffer. So what I realized for me is that if I really wanted to have a better future for them and for my, for my family and for myself, I needed to make a few changes. And it was hard at the beginning. But you know what? I, what I figured out a way to carve out a little bit. And you know how I viewed it? I viewed it. This, all the time I was already spending... That was my keep the machine going time. But I carved out a little bit. Just at the beginning, it was just like 10 hours a week that I carved out, and that was for my family. That was for my future, really for them. You know, I carved that time out, and that time was precious. Every minute I spent there was a minute to buy my time back so I can be with them and give them opportunities and take care of all these different things. So I realized that if I didn't carve the time out now, and if I didn't sacrifice that now and figure that out now, that I wasn't being the leader of that household that I wanted to be. It was, I wasn't being the man that I wanted to be. I wasn't taking care of the people that I wanted to take care of. That's what went through my mind. So I said, you know what, I'm going to make the time. And I figured it out. So let me ask you a question. If I could show you how to do what I did, 
If I could show you how to carve out that time and invest it in your family, in your future, and all that stuff. If I could show you how to make a few changes so your whole life changes, right? And we did this together. It can help you as you build. It's not going to be overnight, but it's going to be worth it. If I could show you how to do that without blowing your whole life up, would you be willing to take another look? Would you be willing to take the next step? You know, with concrete, it's, you know, it, I mean, man, it, it, you get tired. The, you're out in the sun all day. I get it. I mean, I get home at 6, 7 o'clock at night, and I'm freaking beat. I get it. Beat. I was the same way. And so, I mean, from 7 to what? I mean. I get couple, it. Just a couple hours a night. I mean, yep. I totally understand. I totally understand. But, but, but back to the same question. Here's, here's the question I ask myself, and you, you have to ask, ask the question for yourself. I don't want you to do something you don't want to do. But to be your friend in this situation, I got to tell you that for things to change, something's got to change. Because if you keep doing what you've been doing, fast forward five years and you'll see where you're at. And you think you're tired now? You're good. It's, gonna, it's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder, right? Yeah. And as your employees let you down one by one, like mine did one by one, and more and more gets thrown on your shoulders every single day, you realize it gets heavy. Mm -hmm. So I just I decided to make a change. You don't have to, but I would wish it for you. Oh, I definitely want to. Yeah, if you want to, I can show you how. Okay. You open? Yep. All right. This, see what I'm saying with this? <laughs> Understand? <laughs> that sounds magical, right? It's not magical. It's not magical. I literally followed those four steps. I listened, I related, I told him my story. I didn't tell him, hey, change your whole life's going to be hell. <laughs> what I said is, for me, I realized if I didn't change, nothing was going to change. If I didn't do something different in the next five years, nothing was going to be different. And I let him own his little piece of whatever my story was in relating to him. See what I mean? It's the same. I can literally do the same thing if somebody says, I'm not a salesperson. I totally get it. I get it. Who wants to be? I, ugh, I get uncomfortable. I get uncomfortable. I walk under a car lot. Do you get uncomfortable when you walk under a car lot to buy a car and they start selling you? I hate that. And the idea of selling something to somebody here, I'd like, you know, give me your credit card and selling something like, ah, freaks me out, right? But what I realized for me, when I did my homework here, I realized that, that what happens inside of this company is not what I thought salespeople were going to do. I'm not running around with a bunch of stuff in, my, in the trunk of my car, a bunch of widgets, all I do is introduce people to products that I think they might like. And if they like them, I connect them directly to the company. I'm out of it. It's the coolest thing ever. And they send me checks every single month. It's unbelievable. All I have to do, guess what? I don't have to sell at all, and I don't. What I do is I introduce people to what it is that we have. I let them know the benefits. If they decide to do something fantastic, if they do, I get a commission for, for as long as they use the product. It's the coolest thing ever. So let me ask you a question. If I could show you how to get involved and not feel uncomfortable like a hardcore salesperson, to be able to do it and, have pro and have pro help people who need great products, get those great products and deal directly with the company and get paid along the way. If I could show you how to do that, not only do that, but build a team of other people doing it and have fun, work with really fun people, would you be willing to keep going down this process? Would you be willing to you know, take the next look? Would you be willing to take the next step? The answer is of course. Same. Same. Listen, relate, tell stories, answer questions. Or ask the question, I mean. Listen, relate to, and sometimes you might not have a story to be able to tell. You talk to a person, they're saying, you know, look, I make a million dollars a year right now. And you, you listen to them, you go, wow, I, me too. You can't really relate, right? <laughs> 
So well, that's really, really cool. And I will tell you what, there's some other people that have gotten involved in our business that are very successful prior to getting involved. And I can't speak from being, you know, a million dollar a year earner, but here's what I will tell you that they told me. They told me they were bored. They told me they were looking for a challenge. They told me they were looking for something interesting, some legacy. They'd made the money, but they really hadn't been able to contribute in somebody else's life. They wanted to get around something positive. They wanted to make a difference. I don't know if that relates to you, but that's, that's what they told me. That's the reason why they joined, because I asked them the same question. Why would you take a look at something like this when you're so successful already? Amazing. And, and, and for me, when I heard their story, I said, you know what? I could go down a traditional path and beat myself up and have to have winners and losers all over the place. And for me to win, a bunch of people have to lose. Or I could get involved in something where I can only win if other people get to win. So that's what I decided to do. So if I could show you what these other super successful people that joined the company did in order to be able to get their head around this opportunity, and if I could show you how I used this in order to be able to build something that I'm enjoying and having fun doing all the time, if I could show you how to match that with what you got going on in your life, would you be interested in, in continuing the process? Answer is sure, why not? See what I'm saying? You can't give me an objection that I can't answer with this. You can't do it. Anybody think of one? Anybody want to think of one? Give me one that I can't get. Don't have the confidence. He doesn't have the confidence. I totally understand. When you say you don't have confidence, is it confidence in entrepreneurship? Confidence in myself. I don't have the confidence in myself to talk to the people to do what you do. You don't have confidence to, to talk to people to do what I do. Right. Okay. Now, now, what, what's your background, sir? I'm, I build computers. You build computers. So, so you, you've lived in a world where you're just dealing with the machines, you're dealing machines, with all that stuff. Customers. And, and you deal with some customers, though. I deal with customers. It's tough to... Uh, customers are tough. So what do, you, what do you do with the customers? Do you enjoy that part, or do you just want to get it over with? No, I just, uh, I just want to repair them and, and... Just repair the computers repair and get out of here. And get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take your computer, be happy, leave me alone. Yeah, I get it. I understand. Um, sounds to me you're a little bit like an introverted person. Are you introverted? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of to myself. Yeah, me too. So. Me too. I know it doesn't seem like it. I decide to kind of step out of my shell sometimes because I really, really care and I want to help other people. But sometimes uh, I, I just didn't find the right vehicle to do it. Every time I tried to do that in the corporate world, I got slammed down. Every time I tried to do that you know, in the retail world, I got slammed down. So I finally just decided, you know, just leave me alone. I'm just going to do my thing, and I'll be fine, right? So that's what I decided for me. And then I got introduced to this thing. And the most amazing thing, when I first saw it, I saw I just don't have the confidence to be able to do this. I don't have the ability to be able to do this. I'm an introverted person. This is built for salespeople. You're supposed to be this natural born salesperson, have an answer for everything, be able to do every, all that stuff. And you know what I realized? A lot of the top earners are people like you and me. They're introverted. Isn't that something? That they find a way, because they really care. I know you care about people, right? I care about people. You care about people. You're irritated with ungrateful customers, like anybody would, <laughs> right? True. But you care about people, and I care about people. And, and people like us, we're looking for an outlet to be able to put ourselves into, somebody to be able to, to care for and help, to be able to contribute to society, to be able to have a stronger purpose for why we're here. And what happened for me is I realized that this was a, an opportunity for me to learn some new skills, for me to stretch myself a little bit, because if I didn't, I was going to go really, really, really inside myself. You know what I mean? Like, don't see anybody. Don't talk to anybody. Don't do anything. It's just me and my computer and me and my television or whatever. Leave me alone. Close the doors. I could have gone that route. And I'm so glad I didn't. Because connecting to people that are grateful is amazing. Being able to have a person that when you connect with them, the fact that you connected with them, you help them see a better vision for their future and they thank you for it, it's priceless to me. So let me ask you a question. If I could show you how to use the personality you have right now and the problem-solving skills that you have right now and the personality that you have right now 
to be able to contribute to the people that you connect with through the, through the products and through the opportunity. If I could show you how to do all that stuff and crack the code, stretch, spread your wings just a little bit, you know, give yourself permission to dream just a little bit. If I could show you how to do that, would you be willing to take the next step with me? I, I would probably take, yeah, I'd give it a shot. Yeah, why wouldn't you? No. I mean, come on, what else are we going to do? If you're going to be there with me, I would go for it. Yeah, together, because we related, right? <laughs> together, we can do this. As long as I don't got to get up on stage and talk to somebody. So long as you don't have to get up on stage and talk to somebody. He says with the microphone. <laughs> Here, let's, let's cross off a couple things, right? Right. Come on. Get him. All right. Okay. Does that little role play make sense? And we're going to go through all the objections. We're going to cover them all, all 21. We're going to cover them all. We're not going to be able to cover them all right in this section, but we're going to be able to do it. Let's go. Let's keep going through this. Limiting beliefs about network marketing, same thing. Limiting beliefs about, oops, backwards. So we talked about listening, asking the questions, paraphrasing. So you mean it's like this? Is that what you mean? Just trying to get clarity. Don't try to win. Don't try to say, well, you're not right. Your objection isn't valid. That doesn't make sense. Ask people for their stories. Tell me your story. Tell me what happened. Step two is relate. Do you see how important relating was? Uh -huh. Every single one of them, I can relate somehow. And the, rela the relating is what gives them ability to understand more fully. I know how you feel, the relating. I know how you feel, I felt the same way. Here's what I found. Here's what I realized through the journey myself, making it personal, telling stories, Yours and others, yours or others, try not to point at them. Try to point at yourself and how you came up with a solution. And then if I could show you how to get there, would you take the next step with me? Your stories and other people's stories. And step four, if I would you. If I could show you how to get there, would you take the step with me? If I showed you the adventure, would you join the adventure with me if I showed you? And part of that, did you notice that part of that whole vibe with the if I would you is, listen, what's your name? Heidi? Heidi? Yeah. Hi, Heidi. I, I, I talk with Heidi and I say, Heidi, the feeling that I want is you and me adds up to five. One plus one adds up to five. The feeling is, let's do it together. The feeling is, let me help you. The feeling is, we've got a solution. The feeling is, I get you. I un totally understand you. I know the challenges that you got going on in your gut right now. I get it, because I had the same challenges. And here's what I decided to do about it, and if I would you, let's do it together. That's the feeling. Did you feel that when I was role-playing that with the different people? Those that I did it with, did you feel like I was with you? Like, we could do this, we could make this happen, you'll get there too. At the end of every objection, schedule the next exposure, not necessarily the next sale. Not everybody's going to join right away. You, you, sh you share the opportunity with them, they come up with an objection, you answer the objection, they're either ready to take the next step. Did you see the question, if I, then would you be willing to take the next step? What's the next step? Understanding more about the product, understanding more about the opportunity, meeting somebody, getting, getting on a three-way call, going to an event, whatever that next exposure is. The goal is to keep going to exposures and then keep using the, the objections as a, uh, an opportunity to build more rapport, more belief, 
more connection, more understanding, and engage their imagination. If I would you listen, relate, tell stories, ask questions.